Shakespeare. Why not? Yeah. Why not? All right. It's the Crave Show. <laughs> We're back. It's been a couple weeks, man. Yeah. We're here. We got J. Russ, myself, and this week we have the lovely Lindsay Finner with us. Hey, Lindsay, Hi. thank you for joining us. Hi. Yeah. Thanks for having me, you guys. Even though I have yeah. no idea why. <laughs> That's all right. That's awesome. This, this is one of the first times that I can remember. There's probably been other times when J. Russ, you invited someone on and I feel like I actually knew them beforehand and was excited yeah. because I got to hang out with Lindsay a little bit or at least get to know her During. a little bit at Summerfest. Yes. yes. Oh, it was so cool to meet you, dude. It was so, so cool to meet you. And you brought us snacks too. Yeah, that's right. Courtesy of Strive. Bill Tong, baby. Mm -hmm. It yeah. was delicious. Yeah. I took several bags and I ate them for days. So thank you. Good. Very good. Well, I, I had, I really had a very good time and thank you J Rust for yeah. including me and let me be a part of that. It was really, it, so, it's, it's, it's a very fun event. Oh man. It's so fun. Let's, but let's talk about it a little bit. Cause you yeah. guys were both organizers there. Um, and, uh, Chris, it was your first time. Lindsay, this is your second or third year? Uh, second year organizing, but I've been there for several years. Yeah. 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 So get, sh like Chris, I, th I think you might want to go first because because you were, it was your first year. But how was it? What was your impression? What did, what were your thoughts like? Yeah, it was it was it's so good. A lot of fun. I know. I was thinking a minute ago, um, like my because I thought you know maybe maybe you would ask me like what was my favorite part or something like that. So I had already thought about that. My favorite part was really like I feel like I made quite a few friends like real friends, good friends. And that mm. is so cool to me. Like that is so awesome. I mean, I had, I think total, I, I tried to count up. I think I made 23 jumps. I was only there for four days. Um, so I got there. I, actually, I, I did five days of jumping one. I got there the day before mm. I, I got like three jumps in that the day before it started. And then I got however many 21 or whatever. It doesn't matter. But I had a lot of good jumps. I had a few bad jumps. Um, but really more than that was the friends, like just getting to connect with people and meet new people and laugh and have fun. And, um, that's, that's really, that was the best part for me. That was just so good. So fun. That's awesome. And, uh, Linz, what yeah, about you? How, cool how was your you. second year? Summerfest is a lot. I, I, it's just a lot. And if you've never been to Summerfest, then you probably don't understand what I mean by that. But wouldn't you agree? It's just, it's a big ordeal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's so many people to jump with. And I just saw mostly the same faces that I saw the previous year. I jumped with a lot of the same people and um, saw a lot of progress between the two years. Uh, yeah, it was awesome. I really, really enjoyed this year even though it was exhausting. <laughs> yeah. I, I really enjoy, I enjoy kind of the, just the, the atmosphere and the vibe. Mm -hmm. um, everybody is like, I, I didn't feel, it didn't seem like there was, I didn't no no egos, no people like trying to prove themselves. You know, I mean, there's a lot of, or, how many organizers did, did you have JRS total? Do you know? On the free flying angle side, we had um, 20, seven total people on the mm. schedule and then each day we had 18 people working okay and total all disciplines do you know how many organizers total was it like 70 is that what i heard i don't that know that um that seems a little bit high just because um okay we're the biggest discipline by far um in free flying and then i would i would have guessed there were probably 10 belly organizers Wingsuit had a few, but still, that's only like six. And um, so maybe I don't know how it would get to seventy. Total? Yeah. Oh, okay. somewhere more. I, maybe I just heard that number somewhere. Anyway, just I mean, there was a lot of very, very good flyers there, like really good people, and not just not just organizers, but fun jumpers. There's a lot of great flyers, and it was just a really, really nice atmosphere. Nobody, I didn't, I didn't come across anybody that was like 
sky god attitude or, or arrogant or cocky. It was just, everybody was there to have fun and be safe and have a good time. And it was really cool. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. There was, um, I, I got to tell one story. Um, you remember that day when I came and talked to you, JRS and I was like, man, I just totally screwed up. I had two terrible jumps like back to back and they were terrible, not because of the people I was with, but because I had just totally cooked the egg. I just screwed up both exits back to back, two <laughs> jumps in a row. And, um, I was laughing at, I, I wasn't laughing at that time. I was telling Jay Russ, I was like, man, I just, when I thought I was getting good at this skydiving thing, thought I had it all figured out. I go and like screw up these simple <laughs> exits. And, um, so after those two jumps, my next jump, I was, um, had a group of guys. There was five guys that were going to go with me. And, um, it was, it was like, it was an intermediate type angle movement jump is what, what I was planning for them. And when we got together and we're, I was about to talk with them about the dive floor, we're going to go walk it before I was like, guys, I, I got to tell y'all just something real quick. Cause we were both those exits that I screwed up were on the sky van. And, um, so then this one, when I manifested us, the only option was to get back on the sky van. And part of me was like, I wanted to like get back on the sky van and be like, show that sky van who's boss, you know, like I can do this. <laughs> and, um, but then part of me also was like, oh crap, I'm going to screw up another jump, you know? And, um, so I just told these guys, I was like, guys, listen, both of my past two jumps, I just totally screwed up the exit two in a row, like just totally miffed them. And all five of the guys, they all go, Oh, thank you. So, oh my gosh. That's so good to hear. Oh, I'm so glad you said that. <laughs> <laughs> just started laughing. And when, the, for them to say that back to me made me feel so awesome. Cause it was like, it just, I guess for them just took all the pressure off. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know, but it was just yeah. this really awesome moment for all six of us to where we just all just relaxed, let go of every, all pretensions and just like, okay, we're about to just get on this plane and we're going to have a good time. And, um, then I went and talked to, uh, Tommy and got a little, got some tips from him about, um, you know, leading this group and exiting with the sky van and stuff. He gave me some really good, just simple tips. And then we nailed the jump and it wasn't, it wasn't anything complex. It wasn't anything, you know, super difficult, but it was just awesome because all six of us, we nailed the exit We had this nice, you know, just some big sweeping turns all close together. We got down and we were all excited. And I was like, man, that, that was fun. That was really, really cool. cool. So that's one of my, one of my favorite summer fest memories. Yeah. Just putting people at ease with your vulnerability, with your humanness. Right. Like they probably looked at you in your cool orange shirt and just thought, oh, my God, I have to be perfect for this guy. He's going to be judging me and thinking so many things about me when really like. I don't know, we mess up, too. Yeah, man, <laughs> so that's super cool. It was awesome. Just their reaction made me feel so, so much better. It was so cool. I love that. That's that's actually yeah. something that really struck me about meeting you in person, Chris, is I noticed right away how humble you are and how just open to receive information and be, I don't know, a student, be wrong, be out of your element, whatever, whatever that is. I, I noticed that with you right away. Um, and obviously listening to a lot of your podcasts and it's such a charming feature that you have that you just don't see in a lot of leaders in our sport. And I really appreciated that. Um, about you. And I, I think that that probably shined through so much in that moment where you could just be honest with them. I think that's a really oh. cool quality to have. Thank you for saying yeah. that. that. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, Lindsay, you got, you got out of it for nine minutes and 24 seconds. Tell us about yourself. Out of what? <laughs> oh, about telling you about me. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Uh, so just like who, why, who I am. All right. So I'm Lindsay and I've been skydiving for 20 years. I did my first jump back in January of 2004 in skydive Paris. And so that was sort of, SoCal was my home area for years. And now I've been at skydive Chicago since 2016. Um, 
Yeah, I was an AFF instructor for 13 years, and I've sort of migrated over into the sports side over the last four or five years, and now I'm on a competitive MFS team based out of Skydive Chicago called SDC Matrix, and I just do that now. <laughs> I love mixed formation skydiving, and my whole goal is to promote that, have fun with that, and um, I don't know, sort of be um, a voice for people that <clears throat> maybe didn't make the progress that they wanted to in the sport in the time that most people do, and know that you can keep going. There's always something new to explore. There's always something new to do. And after, I think, 16 years in the sport, I discovered how to fly on my head. And now I'm like on a sponsored MFS team. So it's, it's possible. <clears throat> so I like to talk about that. And, um, yeah, that's, that's so me. <laughs> what, why, why did you do that very first skydive? What'd you say? What year, when was it? 2004. Yeah, why why'd you do it? Why'd you go? Um, my girlfriend, my or my best girlfriend at the time was just into trying new things and one day she just called me and said, Are you in or are you out? And I said, As long as it's not scuba diving and she said, Okay, cool. So you're in? She said, Yeah, she said it's the exact <laughs> opposite and we're going skydiving next Sunday and we're doing AFF and I'm like, Oh, okay. So yeah, I did, uh, I did AFF for my first jump and, uh, I think the moment I landed, I booked level two and I've never stopped. It was just like, yeah, hook just got me. That's cool. What, what, what's her name? Jessie Ferrelli. She doesn't Does skydive she's... anymore. Man, do, isn't that like a very common story where someone else gets <laughs> you into skydiving and they quit and that person then the second person keeps going and like really gets into it. I've heard that story so many times. It's yeah, so interesting. That's, it, that's my it story. Is. Oh yeah. You had somebody, what was it? Work friends. Was that your thing? G Russ? No, uh, it was the a guy called Graham Frank, who uh, remains a friend, although we're more distant than we used to be, mm -hmm. um, who we, we skied together. We rock climbed together. We kayak together. Just to, if there was a, a sport, we were doing it. And, uh, he went on semester at sea. You guys remember that program of like traveling around basically on a, on a, a cruise liner around port to port and you check out different things and you study and it's pretty much a mess off, like screw off semester, but um, you get credit for it and it's travel. And he did a tandem in Johannesburg. Um, and uh, it was back long enough ago that he sent me a postcard from Johannesburg <laughs> and uh, said, Hey, uh, when I get back to the States, do you want to go skydiving with me? I think I want to start skydiving. And, um, I was recovering from my bazillionth knee surgery and from motocross and had decided to hang up motorcycles. And, and I said, sure, I'll go do that as soon as you get back. Um, and he got to around two and a half or 3000 jumps, but he, he had, a, he had injured himself. And during the injury, I continued and he obviously stopped. And then, uh, he's on sort of a, a very serious career path with a family. I think mm -hmm. he's got two or three little girls. Um, so he made it quite a long way and a very high skill set, but um, eventually his wife didn't want to skydive. And that was, yeah. Your buddy made it a lot further than my friend did. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. She made it maybe two years. Our, our first year in the sport, we hit it so hard. We did so much tunnel time because the Paris mm -hmm. tunnel had just opened and we started a four way oh, yeah. FS team. And wow. we competed. Oh God, I spent, I racked up my credit cards so high that first year of skydiving and trained, got coaching. We did so much that year. We went to nationals in intermediate FS 2004. I think I had been in the sport for eight months and we did intermediate and our team name was the 20 minute call girls. <laughs> and it, was a, it was an all female team. Uh, even though, even the videographer was a woman and we got last place, we got dead last in intermediate. And, uh, that was my first taste of just how expensive and challenging uh -huh. skydiving uh -huh. was. I mean, I broke the bank 
and got last fucking place. It was this huge paradigm shift my first year of going so hard and then realizing that's not sustainable to like probably get last place again. Yeah, that was, that was rough. And she did that same thing happened to her and she just sort of fell out. Yeah. Where was nationals in 2004? I can't remember. Paris. It was in Paris. Okay. Nation nationals was in yeah. Paris in 04 and 05. Really? 05 as well? Mm -hmm. I thought it, I thought 05 was uh, Lake Wales. Well, somebody, uh, made I, must be, I must be missing stuff up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Uh, okay. I was there. <laughs> okay. You were there too though, right? Well, I mean, I was in Lake Wales for a uh, nationals, <laughs> but I, I thought that was 2005. And then I thought Paris was 2006 because sorry, Andy. Lake Wales, oh, sorry. Lake Paris, Wales. Okay. And Andy Malchiotti is at the house where I'm staying here. Hi, We're working Andy. together. Hi, Andy. Um, and uh, he said Lake Wales was 2003, Paris 2004 and five, and then Eloy 2006. So yes. I was one. I was a year off. Yeah. Phone a friend, J. Russ. There you go. <laughs> I, I got it. <laughs> All right. And you are you are married to Nick Fenner. Yeah. Who was you our guest just, a couple yeah. weeks ago? Yeah, yeah, he was he was guest on our last show, last episode. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. so great. I'm so crazy so about him. He's wonderful. He's, isn't yeah. he? he's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. He was so yeah. nervous to talk to you guys. So if anybody listened to that podcast, just know he was like sweating balls. <laughs> he was so, he was so nervous. It was cute. Oh. Um, how was your impression of of Nick's Summerfest? How did how did I, I mean that'd be great you know, hear it from him, but I'm sure he told you like, how was it for him? It was also his first one. Yeah. He got to organize a uh, beginner and intermediate free fly. And, um, I, I will say maybe I'm throwing him under the bus just a smidge, but after the first day he was like, holy shit. <laughs> it was just <laughs> a lot. Um, and then as the week went on, he was really, uh, really digging it, man. Like he was just so in his element um, he's a really, he's really good with people. Um, and I, I, I would be shocked if he didn't get a lot of good responses in the feedback form because I was, I was watching him and, and listening to his debriefs and he's just fun. You know, he's just a fun guy. Although oh. he, uh, he's a little self-conscious about his sit flying, but, uh, who isn't sit flying is so hard. So Yeah. Okay. He, uh, he had a blast and, and he would love to do it again, I think. But yeah. yeah. Cool. I was, yeah. I was watching him just a little bit. I mean, it's busy, so I didn't get to watch everybody, but he has a really uh, calming, peaceful presence, you know, like yeah. just watching him just sitting, chilling, talking to people, or like you said, debriefing, or I would just look over there and just say, he's just like, just peaceful. You yeah. Know? It's really cool. Yeah. And he sees people for who they are in the moment, mm. in, in that moment. And he just is who he is at all times. So it's, yeah, it's cool. And he, he, um, he used to organize back before his accident. And so this was sort of his first taste back of organizing free fly. And yeah, it was super cool. It was just, it was great. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Thanks for the opportunity for both of us, Jairus. That's cool. Yeah. Do I mean, again, for all sure. three of us. Yeah. <laughs> Talking for Chris. Perfect. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing it again. Um, Lindsay, I wanted to ask you a little bit about um, just, I, I know this is, this is going to be kind of a big question, um, like global, global kind of question. But when, when we first, I don't know, started getting to be a little bit more of friends, um, you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't jump with too many people. Um, in fact, as I recall, you might have only been willing to jump with Nick and, and do two ways. And, and, uh, and that persisted for a while um, of trying. I remember asking you about going jumping and no, you, no, just flat no. Uh, not, you know, broaching a discussion or, or tolerating anybody even asking. Um, and now you are a sponsored team member at Scott of Chicago doing – MFS and regularly organizing other people and jumping with other people. And that sort of transformation is very interesting to me. Yeah. Um, 
And uh, so it's a it's a big question, but I don't know if you wanted to spend a few minutes talking about sort of how that flower bloomed, so to speak. And then um, I have a follow up question about um, being on the sponsor team. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Um, so I, I have turned you down for many jumps, JRS, even three ways. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so I, I mean, I wasn't always like that. Before I came to Chicago, um, I used to do all kinds of jumps with all kinds of people. And um, something happened to me after Nick's accident where I became much more selective and paranoid and careful and distrusting of people. And um, I started pursuing more just wanting to have a connection in the sky. And I just really found that with doing two ways. And, uh, you know, I was lucky enough to have a built in partner doing two ways for a long time, but you know, like Nick never coached me or anything. So there was this many years of stagnation, but as I started becoming a better flyer, then that was sort of the catalyst that got me more comfortable with more people. So when I really reflect on that, um, and this is actually the foundation of something I wanted to talk to you guys about, but just um, sort of not trusting myself as well as trusting the other people in the sky, um, in free fall, under canopy in general. And uh, it sort of took me becoming a more proficient flyer to know that um, I'm going to get out of their way, if that makes sense. And I think um, sure. I've definitely opened up a little bit more, but don't don't let it fool you, J-Russ. I really only ever want to do two ways still. I mean, it's the, the, nothing's actually changed. <laughs> I just, uh, I'm just a little more um, liberal now with uh, what I do. But yeah, like if, if I can only do... MFS with Joey forever. Like I, that would be great. <laughs> I don't need to do other <laughs> stuff. Like we can um, hang out on the ground. I'll go do my skydive with just this one other guy, you know? So that's, it, that hasn't really changed, but I feel more confident that, um, if somebody's doing something stupid, I can get out of their way. So, sure. yeah, I don't know if that's what you wanted to hear, but that's kind of just transparent. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the only criteria is just hearing what you have to say. It's, it's, it's yeah. an open-ended question for sure. Yeah, um, I feel like so many people get involved in um, in skydives that are over their head um, or aren't a great idea because it's rude to say no. It's not. It's fu it's fucking hard to say no to people, and um, I, I just got really good at that, you know. And and I. I see skydives all the time around me that probably should have been smaller than they were probably that people probably shouldn't have been on that. Maybe they weren't ready. I mean, it, it happens all the time. And I, I feel like there's just this push to do more bigger stuff and people skip the basics of just being able to like get to that one other person in the sky or change orientations and stay near just that one other person. Um, so yeah, like I, I see people skip over the, the small stuff a lot and then just go straight into like a big way camp when they can't hold their head down yet. And, um, I don't know. I don't really like to be involved in that. <laughs> don't you see that? that? I see. Yeah, I know you see that. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what you were a minute ago when you said there something like that? That's what I wanted to talk to you guys about. Was there more to that or was that kind of what you were getting at or what, oh, what, more, well, what more were you? I, w I was hoping to discuss um, the term ninja in skydiving oh. and discuss that. But um, we can kind of either parlay into that now or talk about that later. But I have I have some questions for you about the term ninja and what that means and and it all kinds yeah. of kind of piggybacks on this whole discussion, really. Mm. So, okay. But yeah. I don't know if J, J Russ may have some other questions, but I, I want to dig just a little bit more into that saying no thing. And cause that really is hard to do. And that yeah. was one thing I think, um, 
not just at Summerfest, but organizing anytime, even, even at my home drop zone, some, it's really difficult for me to say no. And I I've found that when I have the courage <laughs> to do it, I mean, I still want to do it nicely, but to just say, no, we've got our group. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll catch you on the next one. Usually those jumps, the jump that happens when I said no, it usually ends up being a really good jump. Yeah. And when I keep saying yes to people, those end up not being good for anybody. And, yeah. uh, I like, but still for some reason it's hard for me. So I, I don't know what, how can you, what, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. What, what can I think about or what should I do that helps me be like, no, no. Like what's that, what's that little mm. flag or that indicator that says, nope, this is the time to say no. Yeah. I think it depends on whether you're an organizer or you're just out fun jumping with your friends. I, I think it's far easier to say no as an organizer, as somebody who is there providing a service for the drop zone. It's way easier to set boundaries. Mm. Um, and for me, it's, I mean, I don't do a lot of just random organizing. I've been lucky to do mostly organizing that has a parameter around it. Like I am doing intermediate free fly today and the max is four. Like to me, that creates such an easy boundary to say no to um, things. But just on a random organizing day, um, sometimes it will just depend on my personal, or, yeah, my personal assessment of what the other people can do. And whoever I've committed to first, that the jump needs to be involving them. And then obviously anybody that has been said, that I've said no to, make them feel worthy of jumping with, that I want to jump with them, get to know them a little bit, like make sure to repeat their name and make them feel like I do want to jump with them. It's just a no for now kind of thing. Like to me, that's, that's sort of what I've done at Summerfest and organizing. But as a fun jumper, like when I've said no to J Russ or other people that maybe it's something that like, it's a specific jump that I want to do and I don't want to make it bigger. I mean, I just throw myself under the bus personally and say, I'm not comfortable with that. Um, even if I kind of am, but I don't really want to, I'll just, I don't have a problem throwing myself under the bus. And I think a lot of people aren't willing to, to admit that they're uncomfortable with things because that doesn't look cool, man. That just doesn't look cool to say you're not comfortable doing an eight way when you probably should stick to like a three or four way or whatever, whatever the case is. And I'm just not afraid of that anymore. Like I, that, I don't know if that helped you at all. Yeah, <laughs> no, it does. It does. It yeah. does help. And, and I think just, even just hearing someone else say, no, you do need to, you need to be able to say no. And like, that is a good thing. It's okay. And, mm -hmm. and the practical of take the time to, to talk to them, really try to understand their skill level, just everything you said. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think I, because I think back to when I was like a newer jumper and times when people would tell me no, but I, I think the memories I have is people doing it in a way that was kind of mean yeah. or, or it felt, it felt not mean, but just dismissive. That's the word dismissive. Just like, yeah, right. No, you know, not even like that. Just like, no, you're not going with us. Yeah. And so I, I have those memories and there's probably not that many. There's probably only like three, but they were still significant enough that I'm like, man, I don't want to make somebody feel like that. That mm -hmm. felt crappy, you know? Yeah. And so then when people are asking, can I join? I'm like, oh, yeah, of course you can join me. Come on. You know, I'm like, yeah, come join, come jump with us. The more the merrier, man. <laughs> I have a yeah. ton of those memories too. Yeah. So, I, I wanted care? to point out to both of you guys that like as an organizer, Lindsay was correct. It should be, should be easier when you're working for the drop zone and you have that mandate of safety that's sort of um, encapsulating your whole day. But in most situations, I, I find that it's helpful to me, whether I'm organizing or, or just jumping with friends, to remember that the person asking me and on the overall happiness that um, can happen in this moment, there's one person that I can make happy and the other members of the group are probably going to be kind of sad. Uh, because they want, probably want me to say, no, I'm sorry, our group is full. And so you can care for the people that are already in your group, the six or seven or whatever, five people that are in your group, or you can make this one person feel part of the group. But, but you can actually accomplish both things 
saying no, I'm sorry, it's full and we already planned our dive or whatever you want to list off as an excuse, doesn't have to be the end of your comment. And yeah. I, I think that if you guys think back to those situations, if the person had not dismissed you, but instead said, look, I'm, I'm sorry, this one's full and I don't want to add more people, but I can jump with you on the next one. And that, that's such a simple way to address that issue, especially if you're an organizer, that is what you're supposed to do anyway. Um, but even if it's a new guy that you don't want to go with and, and you, you know, you're willing to, to put that on the end, that, that's such a great way to sort of two birds and one stone, in my opinion. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but it is a tough spot. Um, it's a super tough spot. I actually ended up in that spot about three or four weeks ago. I put together a casual but very specific VFS day with um, three friends at the drop zone and we were just doing VFS with no camera all day. Shocking, J Russ, I know. But um, there was somebody there that I know and I really like who is a good flyer and had just gotten current and then asked if they could come and do video for us. And everything in my body said, mm. no. Hey, they had never done VFS video before and I just said yes. And then, of course, got very scared on the jump because they were very, very low and ended up underneath me. And it was a situation that I was not comfortable with in the moment. And um, anyway, like, I feel like anytime I don't say no, when my body says to say no, I always end up in some sort of weird situation. And um, like, it still happens to me. I, I wish I had said no, but... Yeah. yeah. Some pe sometimes yeah. people can't do what they claim that yeah. they can do. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that, that can I, sorry. Lynn, Chris, do you, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I, that is one thing about Summerfest. My experience with most of the people that I flew with, I think most people that I might, for me, were pretty honest with their skill set. Mm -hmm. I was, I was like, wow, thank you cool. so much. I mean, I even had a couple, one time where I was telling him the dive flow and one guy was like, as I kind of got through the dive flow, he's like, Hey, okay. If that, I'm going to have to, I don't think I'm going to, I'm going to pull myself off because that's, that's out of my skill set. And I was like, Oh, well, and then, and like two, two or three other guys were like, yeah, me too. I was listening. I was like, wow, that sounds, I was like, well, hold on. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Like, like first of all, thank you so much for being honest and telling me second of all, if, if most of you are feeling like that, let's change the dive flow. Like let's, and so we, we change it up, but, um, yeah, I think for the most part, I was like, this is, this is very refreshing that people are, and that goes back to that ego thing. There wasn't a lot of, uh, at least what I experienced people just trying to be honest with where they're at, what they could do and have fun. It was, it was nice. Um, Lindsay, let, can we circle back to the ninja thing? Sure. Let's hear it. What's, what's your question? What? Oh, so what, I mean, gonna talk about? I, I have had an aversion to the term ninja in skydiving to describe a skill set for years now. Okay. I hate that term. So, okay. First of all, how do you guys feel about that term? And then second, <laughs> what? <laughs> I love it. It's my favorite thing to call people. <laughs> Isn't that great? Um, and like, uh, okay, so on the heels of Summerfest, where yeah. there are beginner, intermediate, advanced, and ninja, both angles mm. and free flying, um, what would you consider the skills and mindset necessary to actually be on a ninja jump or to actually be considered a ninja? These are my questions for you guys. <laughs> well, I, I can, I honestly can understand your aversion to the term. I, I, ninja is something that um, I don't, I don't think I would ever self apply. Um, and so it, joining that group would, would as a start be tough. Uh, it's, I, I continue to use it because I feel like it's a well understood concept that it, 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 as a group name, it, it denotes the highest level that we're going to have at Summerfest. Um, I think that as Chris pointed out, we had a really good year with like people being kind of circumspect about their abilities. Um, 
but uh, I would I probably would be okay with like what's the alternate word for Summerfest? Like a expert mm. comes to mind, but the, I think people are even less willing to call themselves experts, rightfully so, probably. Um, and so if there's another word that calls to mind that that basically we're going to do a lot of the most advanced things, like we could do advanced and advanced er. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Advanced-er. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Advanced-ish okay. and advanced-er. Yep. Yeah. That's it. I'll, I'll, advanced I'll try ish it. and advanced-er. Or, or, yeah. Or if you guys come up with some other word that you know sums all that up in a in an easy mental picture. Um, yeah. You know, I'm not Fired saying at me. that it that it shouldn't be used at Summerfest. It's mm. um. It's it's the need for a term in general, I think, that, yeah. that it is. And the word ninja sounds so cool that people want to be ninjas before they're ninjas. And I yeah. personally believe that there are very few actual ninjas out there in the world, in the wild. There are so few. Um, Chris, we are in the presence of one right now. Um, Let, let's move Danny on. Danny DeVito. No, I'm just oh, kidding. good. Perfect. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Whoever's on the wall behind uh, you is obviously a ninja. <laughs> oh, that's a, uh, that yes. That was awesome. That was that's fantastic. That's nice uh, work, Lindsay. That we're was staying cool. at Steve and Sarah Curtis's rental. So this is Steve Curtis and that's yep. Sarah Curtis. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, he's presenting her with a rose. That's what, uh, and she's expressing like, oh my, you're giving me a rose. Um, See, yeah. we're all in the presence of two ninjas right now. Two ninjas right there. Steve and Sarah. Perfect. <laughs> no, I, uh, yeah, I th so, I'm pretty sure Jay Russ is a ninja. Yeah. Let's move you, on. You say what, what you want, Jay what's, Russ. But... What's the What's the other word, guys? What What would we use instead of ninja? I think it just should be. You should have to take a test or something for it. You know, uh, like there should be. Oh God! There, there should be a qualification for it. You know? Who's writing that test? What that, that's what I'm asking. What is it? You know, what do you consider a ninja? Because it's, it's being abused, is what I'm saying. So, I, I, other than Summerfest, I don't use that term very much because I also don't. Uh, yeah. So the other person that's staying in this house, uh, he's not here right now. Is Chad Ross? Do you guys know Chad? He's a ninja. He's a ninja. Every and, way, shape, and form. Yeah. So, uh, Andy, I would I would call Andy a ninja, but he wouldn't like it. Um, and uh, <laughs> and Chad, I I call it. He probably doesn't like it either. He's a real. He's a pretty quiet dude, actually. Um, but a couple of years ago, I think in 2018, he got backpacked in the middle of the formation on the 200 way. And uh, I wish I had video. Um, he gets corked out above a 200 way. Uh, he corks out because somebody slams into him. He's back on his head in a second, comes down, boom, he's in his slot and ducked. It, the whole process probably took three seconds. And I remember I'm one of the organizers. I've, I've won a couple world champions at that point, and I watched it happen, and I was just like, wow, wow, I wish – that if I was in that situation, that that was my response. That was amazing. Uh, and he came the down thinking wild. he was, the video is wild. He is so fast back in his slot in cutoff shorts, arms with no sleeves. Uh, he doesn't have a suit on like ninja. Um, and probably he wouldn't like me to call him that either, <laughs> to be fair. But uh, it was, that was a ninja move. Um, yeah. But the, yeah, you know, top good. level. Right. Whatever you very, call yeah. It. Top level, but top level. yeah. Um, yeah, but it, I, I agree. It's a tough right, term. Sorry. Just find me another one. Are you, are you <laughs> Lindsay, are you specifically saying for summer fest for this, for the sake of mm. differentiating, mm. uh, different skill? Are you saying in general, even at all? Kind of in general. I, I just think it's, it's, uh, it's overused, you know, mm. um, ab absolutely. Like, uh, yeah, I think it's overused, I, and it, it's just one of those things where people want to be there and they're not. And 
Um, I, I don't know. I, I'm not saying you need to find a different word for Summerfest, j -Ros. It's just, yeah, it's just the, the term, I guess. Do, is it used at your drop zone much, Chris? Is that something that gets thrown uh, around there? No, not too, mm. not really. I mean, there's not really an opportunity to use it. Um, yeah, no. Mm. I think for, well, for some, for Summerfest, I can see how, you know, I mean, you got to have some differentiators and I totally understood what you were doing with the beginner intermediate advanced and just like, okay, we have to have some kind of differentiation. Right. So to me that, that worked and, and there's going to be some confusion. It's, they're not arbitrary by any means, but mm -mm. there's, there's gray, there's overlap. And it's like what I call ninja, somebody else might call wh whatever, you know, who knows. Um, yeah. And so I did, I have thought a little bit, I was like, I wonder if there's a way to like, like, what if you did like a scale of one to 10 and you said, um, beginner jumps is like one to two skill level or one to one to two and a half intermediate is three and four, uh, advanced. And then, uh, whatever advanced -er is seven to eight. <laughs> And then nine and 10, we're not doing that. Yeah. We're not, we don't have people who are organizing jumps that are nine and 10. Um, so, the, hmm. I, and, and this can be a, a, you know, an ongoing discussion. And, and certainly um, if you guys are, are going to come back to Summerfest, then you can have input here. Um, when I looked around at the group, we did, we, the, the people that were flying in the ninja groups, there were, there were some, quite good flyers um there mm -hmm. and uh and some of the organizers on their day off were flying in the ninja group um you know as what immediately comes to mind is um jasmine um her last name used to be martinez but she has now married bo kaler and her so that's her new last name bo was that sorry jasmine's organizing bo is there as a fun jumper bo's pretty freaking good um you know and and like i i don't there's no ranking system for people who are are at different levels of the world but he's a really good flyer and so um you know he's been on 200 way attempts and he's a great angle flyer and and so where do i where do i put Bo? i mean he he he's also a very mellow guy and probably him and jasmine wouldn't call themselves ninjas but he is legitimately in that group um you know doing some of the most complex things that we could probably ask anybody to do at summerfest and not not just because uh you know not saying that well he's really good for summerfest he's just really good um and so there there is a little bit of legitimacy to that group and on the other end of that then there's people that join that group that definitely do not belong because they want to they want to self-apply that term, but maybe that's, maybe that's the criteria you guys. And I should write that down. If you like self-applying this term, you're not in this group. Yes. <laughs> if, you, <laughs> if, you, if this bothers you a little bit to even be thinking of yourself as a ninja, come on. <laughs> well, what, but what about, what about yeah. those of us who don't self-apply and also actually aren't in the group because there's no, you don't that belong too. <laughs> Yeah, that's know, right. then, yeah, yeah, then we don't belong there. Yeah. Yeah. I, but may, yeah. It, rem it reminds me of a story. I think it was the Saturday of Summerfest, the last Saturday of Summerfest. So you had left already, Chris. And somebody that I know um, showed me a video, unsolicited, showed me a video that they had just landed from and like came up to me and said, I just went on a ninja jump and I ruined it. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. And they showed me the jump. And yeah, 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 they, they, um, they ruined the jump. And as I'm looking at this person, I know that they probably are at the lower end of advanced. And then they looked at me and said, um, everybody gets one. And I said, but everybody shouldn't get one. Like you kind of, you kind of know you shouldn't be in that group, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. And I, and I told them that, and I said, you know, I don't know if this has to do with, um, your gender or anything like that, but, uh, <laughs> ah, that's so, this, the subtle hand there, Lindsay, nice work. <laughs> I'll give you two guesses, which gender it is. And the first one doesn't count. The first one doesn't count, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there, yeah, that just, 
that that story just came to mind that I wanted to share with you guys and how like you know just knowing full well that they didn't belong in ninja and going and doing it anyway and it was probably a 10 or a 12 way and I'm thinking all right so that's like $33 a jump times 10 probably 10 tickets like that's a $330 thing that you just fucked up for everybody that's kind of that sucks that really sucks yeah no that's how I'm looking at it <laughs> being that person I just messed up the jump on a 200 way where 199 other people are docked at $60 a jump because we're going to 20 grand that that's yeah. a rough one what does yeah. that feel like Jairus well <laughs> the, you guys Lindsay knows very Lindsay well Chris, punches. no 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 not at all it's great um Get, kind of getting back to uh, something that you guys were talking about. I try not to chime in too much, but um, but uh, Chris mentioned about like I screwed up these two exits and uh, you know I was stressed out. It's a sky van. Now I got to go back in the sky van. Am I going to screw it up again? And you know that poster that I put up in the corner is is meant to be a reminder that it doesn't matter what level you get to in the sport, you are still a human being, and human beings fuck up all the time. And so that, that poster, uh, of me on my belly over the sit record, that wasn't the reason why we didn't get the record because the jump was a mess, but it's, it is an excellent reminder that all of us have that capacity. Um, it's a great yeah. picture. Did you see it, Chris? Did you see it? No, I don't, here? I don't, I don't guess I noticed it. Mm -hmm. oh, I'll send you a picture uh, of it tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. It's a bunch of people in a sit and the, the record and I'm in that stupid green suit. So you can't miss it. I'm just on my belly over the top of the pod next to me. Um, Cause I fucked up. <laughs> Thank you for being human, J Russ. We love it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I it, it has been a, a, a a lot of good laughs and I don't want to take away from that, but I, I, an incident happened guys that I do want to bring up and talk about, especially considering, um, <laughs> Nick's, uh, Nick's accident years ago. Um, because it's a, it's a pretty shocking reminder of, of, um, the danger of what happened with Nick. And I don't know if, did you guys hear about what happened in Paris Valley? Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, Chris, there was a tandem pair that went through a dust devil. Hmm. Um, and they are not with us anymore. Uh, oh, the woman's name, I, I don't think I ever met her, um, but she's pretty well known in the sport. Pretty sounds like a pretty awesome woman named Devery. Um, and they're gone. And so, especially since we had Nick on last week and, um, and, you know, Lindsay brought up, brought up his accident. I wanted to just remind people that when the conditions are, that those kinds of conditions around the drop zone that dust devils are super unpredictable. Um, I'd say it's, it's really safe to say that Nick got crazy lucky in his accident that that, that didn't take his life. Um, they're, 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 they happen all the time. Uh, all it takes, as I understand it, is a, uh, a thermo differential uh, around ground level where two different temperatures meet like asphalt and grass or something like that. And it starts swirling the air and it sort of builds from there. Um, I'm certainly not an expert on what creates dust devils, but they can be very difficult to see. Um, and they are incredibly dangerous to fly through. So I know that um, I spoke to somebody uh, two days ago, I think that uh, it was pretty late in the day for Paris Valley. Paris is notorious for, Dust devils, they happen there all the time. Um, they happen in Eloy, like it's, it's not uncommon. Um, but that they had perhaps shortened operations to try to avoid the hottest parts of the day when, when that was more of an issue. Um, but uh, just wanted to, I don't know, share that as sad as it is um, because we have, I, I, I sometimes get, I don't know what the right word is. I feel like there's some lessons that we've, we've paid for already. Um, and we don't necessarily need to pay that bill twice. And, and when repeat things happen on, on that kind of an issue where it, it, 
if you know you're at one of those drop zones where it's a difficult time of the day and, and you know that dust devils can be a common occurrence when the, when the first one pops up and it didn't have a negative consequence to anybody's life, it might be a, a good time to sit down uh, and, and just call it for the day or wait until it cools off, which is going to take a while. Um, I don't know if you, do you guys have stuff to add on that on that general issue. I would agree that that area of the world, the Devil's Corridor, they call it over there, Paris oh, and yeah. Mm -hmm. Um Yeah, it's really scary to jump in the afternoon there this time of year. And it's super hot. Um, you know, I, ca I can speak as a former instructor there that I never felt pressured to jump there. Like if I felt uncomfortable, but we would always jump all day long and maybe take some like some breaks through the day mm. um but yeah it's it's super common there elsinore eloy and yeah. i i really respect what eloy does with regard to just shutting down like we're done we're gonna open really stupid early and we're gonna close early and we're not even gonna mess with it and um i think there is talks of that going into effect I know yeah. I can't speak. I can't speak for them, but it is a, a huge loss for the community out there. And, um, Devery really was a very lovely person. And Jairus, didn't you tell me one time that, um, polarized lenses help as far oh, as being able to see tremendously. Them? Yeah. In fact, um, I'm jumping near Eloy right now. Uh, and my student did not have polarized glasses. Uh, the first day and I went and got a couple pairs just 20 bucks from Walmart and mm -hmm. brought them in the next day and he had gotten a pair for himself um, after I shared with him like man you can't jump out here without them uh, yeah. but yeah they make a tremendous difference just to be able to pick up um, the the visibility being able to pick them up visibly um, is a huge difference with polarized yeah. The downside to that, if, if anybody's not aware, is that um, your altimeter will not be nearly as visible for you. In fact, when your hands are up on the risers, if you try and look at it and you're not, you're not actually aligned with um, – it's also a polarized uh, crystal, I guess. The glass plate is polarized. But when polarized meets polarized, they have to line up exactly for you to get the light through them. So if you're accustomed to – <clears throat> looking up your altimeter under canopy and then you put those on, it's just going to be a black screen. Um, and you've got to turn your, your altimeter to, so that the, basically the layers line up. Um, yeah. so that there is a downside to it. Um, if, if you choose to get those glasses, mm -hmm. you may have to futz with however you mount your LT. That depends on the manufacturer. Actually, there's certain ones that oh, don't. Okay. Yeah. Larson and Bruce guard L and B, they are, Polarized. Uh, yeah. 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 Hmm. So, sorry to bring down the mood. We can move on from that. Um, I did have a question, actually, Lindsay. Um, just to, because I I know, and you mentioned that you are on a sponsored team, um, and I know that there's always people who are coming up in the sport and they're training and they're working hard. And they're curious, like, what does it take? What what does it take to be sponsored? Do I do I have mm. to go out and win everything before that's going to happen, or is it enough that I'm working hard? Is it enough that I smile a lot? Is it what, what like what does it take? You know. Um, and so you recently <laughs> went through that process. Uh, well, what was it like for you going through that process? And what at what point did you think I have I have a, a, a valid argument or uh, convincing discussion that can happen about why I should be sponsored. Hmm, that's a great question because I I still don't um, feel like I have a valid argument or discussion for that because I never feel like I'm doing enough for it. <clears throat> and hmm. the the big picture for me is to create value. I mean, in order for somebody to offer uh, a company to offer a skydive or something, you have to create value for them in some way. And so for me personally, from the very start of that thought that, 
oh, I, I could really use some, some help in with getting more training. Uh, my, my whole goal was how can I create value? That's the only, that's our, that's our team motto really is that we're here to create value. Um, so, uh, it certainly isn't cause we're the best skydivers. I'll tell you that <laughs> it's definitely not. We do smile and have a lot of fun. Um, but <clears throat> when we have approached companies, yeah. Can I ask you though? Because you've been around a long time, right? 2004 yeah. is 20 years of skydiving. And Chris, mm -hmm. you, you can chime in on this as well. Should the drop zone only sponsor the best skydivers? Is, should that be their criteria? And, and if it's not, if you're admitting, like you guys have, as so far, not won nationals as an MFS team. You've not won a world meet. MFS isn't in the world meet yet, hopefully mm -hmm. soon. Um, but... Uh, if that's not the criteria, which is clearly not, on, on what was the decision based, do you think? Hmm. Uh, like speaking for Skydive Chicago or speaking for Cookie or well, B, or like. I mean, mm -hmm. anybody that chose to sponsor you, they all had, they all thought mm -hmm. similar things, right? And mm -hmm. it wasn't that you're the world's best skydiver, whoever that person is, or whoever that, whatever. That's not. That's yeah. not. They didn't. They didn't base it on that. And so yeah. Rook or, or Jason Cookie or who, who, whoever decided to sponsor you, they, they may not have sort of quantified. And so I'm asking you to, okay. to guess or, you know, give, give your ideas. Yeah. So I'll, I'll put myself in the shoes of Scott of Chicago. Um, when, so this is my fourth year, um, on the team in the first two years, we were just kind of playing around, having fun, getting to know it. And then we decided to take it serious. And that's when we approached the drop zone and immediately we decided to, um, just sort of take a leadership approach mentally. Like how can we create something out of nothing? that will bring people to the drop zone that will create a buzz that will, um, create value like butts in airplanes, um, chitter chatter about what's going on, like being a presence at the drop zone that, um, can answer questions or be, uh, like sort of be in a leadership sort of position out there. Um, and we started just creating events and like, we just sort of had the, if you build it, they will come mentality. And it's, so far it's worked. And I think we just had to literally be the people and the team that a company would want to invest in. Like we, we didn't just form and say, Hey, we're good flyers. Like, we want to train for free. Like it was never about that. It was about like, how can, how can we create more revenue at your drop zone? How can we create more stoke with the people, get more people involved, um, have more of a buzz there and, and, you know, just have more of a responsibility, I guess. And we just stepped into that before ever receiving anything because that's just sort of who Joey and I are. Um, and, that we were, we've been recognized for that, I guess. I, mm, clearly. Yeah. Like we sort of, I, I, that, that's, that's sort of how I, I think, I don't know. That, that's yeah. <laughs> I, I think you, cool. Lindsay, you, you, you nailed it. I mean, as I'm listening to you speak and just the little bit that I've gotten to know you, um, like hearing you talk, made me, th I, I, in my mind, I was actually thinking, man, I wish Crave had a bunch of money that I could pay Lindsay to be a representative for us. You're Seriously. So sweet. You're no, the that, sweetest. No, that's, that's <laughs> sincere. I'm not trying to be sweet. I'm, I'm telling you what I actually thought. Um, Thank you. No, be, because that, I mean, that, that is, that's the answer to the question that JRS asked. Mm -hmm. Why would a company want to give money to an athlete? Why? Because of who they are. And 
I, I know people and I have friends and I've seen skydivers who are like, they send these, you know, they, they have all these sick videos where they're just ripping in the sky and doing all this cool stuff. And they're tagging these manufacturers and companies and every stuff on all these videos to show how awesome they are. But what kind of person are they? Like, what kind of man are you? What kind of woman are you? How are you treating people? How are, and so like, yeah, as, as someone who has a small business and cares about the reputation of my business and what I'm trying to do and who I'm trying to be, like when I hear you say that, I'm like, man, I wish I could make that happen. You're because so sweet. That, you. that is what, yeah. that's what I think we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. A business is try that that I think is a good business is trying to add real value to the community. And that, mm -hmm. that, that is what, that's really what I'm trying to do with Crave. Like get, I'm actually trying to give a good thing to our people. And so when I see someone else, I'm like, yes, absolutely. That's what I, I believe. That's what LNB is doing. Yeah. I believe that's what cookie is doing. I, after mm -hmm. spending time at Scott of Chicago, that is obvious what they're trying to do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, of course they're going to see that. And be like, yeah, we're happy to give you guys money. Have yeah. you guys ever met L and B owners, Mads and I? I no, used I, to. Not... Uh, okay, I, I, their daughter is uh, Louisa is an active skydiver, and um, and uh, her her parents own the company, and they used to travel around quite a bit. I think they've stopped so much, but dealing with them, if you. I wish that you guys had met them if you have their products because it was like it was like talking to your grandparents at Christmas time. They just they just wanted to help you. They just wanted to help you be better. And they're so so nice and so generous and you just it, it, it was crazy. Like uh it literally reminded me of being around my grandparents at Christmas like <laughs> it was just this overflowing of oh, we love you guys. We see you on the Aww. internet and we just we just want to help your team. <laughs> it was just so super cute, you know. And, and uh or if you ever get a chance like Jason Cookie, um he might be at the world meet. Um, mm. and, uh, I, I haven't talked to him in, in, a, in a few months, so I'm not hundred percent sure from, he owns cookie. He's in Australia, just such a good dude. And, and, uh, yeah, yeah I, th I think that, uh, you've got it right in general about you're trying to add value to their company and, and they see that in you and it isn't necessarily about being the world's best guy ever. It's, it's about what, what can you do to help their company? I think you, yeah. you did well with that question, Linz. Thanks. Yeah, that, yeah, that's sort of our whole thing. And, you know, and just to go a little bit further with that, um, we've been putting on events at Skydive Chicago and at Skydive Sebastian for the last year and a half. So last season, last winter and this year. And I mean, we don't really charge anything for them. I mean, they're not all free but we do free full days of coaching. Our, our competitions are 20 bucks to enter and that's to cover, you know, snacks and stuff like that. Um, but there's, you know, we're not out there trying to just see everybody as a customer. We actually really want people to fall in love with MFS and um, just have a stoke with their skydiving to be involved with something. That's just basically yeah. what we're trying to do. And it's working slowly, slowly, but surely we're spreading the, the good word of mixed formation skydiving right now. Yeah. Are you guys, um, talk, can you talk a little bit about, um, nationals is coming up and not too long. And then you guys have a test event at the world meet. Um, what do you, what are you yes. thinking? Well, you know, I'm pretty sure <clears throat> not to, you know, not to, um, blow our cover or anything, but this is probably going to be our only world, uh, world meet ever. <laughs> mm. So we're going to really enjoy this. Um, unless something crazy happens, um, with resources and such, but, uh, the, uh, USPA had asked basically Scott F Chicago, who's now putting on the world meet to do a test event slash exhibition, um, in tandem with the actual world meet to display what MFS is to the world. And we are beyond thrilled to be able to be a part of that, um, to show them what it's about. I know 
Um, a lot of the, there were a lot of changes this year to the MFS dive pool, um, thanks to Andy and Jason from Flight Shop and the, the leaders and just, you know, I don't even know how to, what sound do you make to this? We're not worthy. Um, and with a lot of that in mind was to take it to the world. And so we're actually going to get that chance and it's got to be one of the coolest damn opportunities that I think has come my way in a long time. And for the sport in general, um, I think, I think we're heading in the right direction for sure. Yeah. It's exciting. <clears throat> It is super exciting. And then Nationals is at our home turf, Skydive Chicago, which is super cool. Yeah. And um, so far, Joey and Nick and I have been training all season. And we're still training hard. We're in the middle of a training camp right now. And it's just going awesome. Like, we're having more fun than I think we've ever had. It's It's really cool to train with somebody all the time and just get better and better and you know, JRS, <laughs> what that's all about. Um, so yeah, we're excited to take everything that we've practiced and learned this year. We've, um, you know, like I said, the dive pool has grown significantly this year. And just um, personally on our team, we incorporated a lot of more advanced moves. So we've been working really hard on that. And, um, you know, our goal as a team is we just really hope to stand on the podium again. So we're fighting our asses off to try to do that and I mean that alone creates some value for the companies that get that bit of exposure but something tells me they don't really care all that much about that but maybe they do I, I think I they do know. yeah I care about that yeah, so that's course. kind of that's our goal I don't suspect that we're going to be standing on the top of the podium anytime soon but um so like I'm just having a great time <laughs> I'm having a good old time. Hey, can real, real quick, can you what what does training look like for you guys? What, what does that actually mean? What does that mean? I mean, like I'm trying to I'm trying to imagine if I watched you throughout a day of training or a week like what would I what would I see? I mean, I know you're jumping out of the airplane, but besides just jumping over and over, what, what are you doing? How are you getting better? What are you doing? Ah, uh, yeah. Um, so our team Matrix has a little bit of an unorthodox training style for a team that trains as hard as we do like we jump pack for ourselves jump again like it's it's kind of exhausting so we don't get as many jumps per day as maybe core or rhythm or airspeed or flight shop but um so we'll prep our jumps for the day depending on exactly what transitions or specific blocks that we want to work on and okay we, what do you mean prep our jumps for the day what does that mean what do you mean? What does that mean? What does prep that our, mean? When, <laughs> when you say prep our jumps for the day, I don't know what that is. Okay. So yeah, we'll, we'll decide. So we'll decide awesome. the moves that we want to work on. This is okay. great. Thanks this for putting me on the spot. Yeah. Um, hey, I want to know, this is interesting to me. No, no, no. The thing is like uh, when she said it, I'm like, yeah, prep the jumps. And, and that yeah, totally makes perfect sense to me, but to have you <laughs> be here and that, that, that's just not in your wheelhouse. That's perfect. No, that's yeah. great to, because I would yeah. have never asked. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Okay. So we, you know, we'll, we'll decide what we want to work on based on lots of criteria, whether it's stuff from the last camp, um, stuff that we've seen other teams do that we want to do, or we've come up with ideas on our head of, Ooh, that would be really cool to try. So then we will decide the moves that we're going to do and okay. we'll decide that the night before. And we'll usually plan, like if it's a 10 jump day, we'll plan five jumps. And so we'll do each jump twice. And okay. sometimes there'll be a full draw as if it could be something that would be in a competition. Or sometimes we'll just do a drill where we'll, I don't know, we'll work on a layout and then we'll reset. And then we'll go do a layout and we'll reset just to get repetition. So sometimes we'll do that. And then um, in the morning, we'll get there early and we will engineer the jumps. So what I mean by that is we will decide who's doing what moves um, and figure out the specific grips. Is it this grip? Is it this grip? Is it that grip? Is it this grip? I mean, because we're switching orientations, we could go from both of us being on our belly to 
now we're, I'm going to sit, he's head down and maybe we're going to do it gripped holding hands. Maybe we're not, maybe we're going to catch the grip in the middle of the transition. I mean, there's so many options that we have to, well, go back in our memory data bank, uh, to remember what went well in the past or what we need to work on. Um, we have shit memories cause we're in our mid forties. So we have that all in a spreadsheet. <laughs> so half the time we're like, let's look at the spreadsheet and figure out what we did three months ago, the last time we did this, and then we'll decide how we do it. And, um, out of the five jumps that we have planned for the day, we'll start with the last one and we'll walk through that. And, um, Chris, you probably have never had the distinct privilege of watching us um, engineer and walk a jump, but it is, um, it's sort of like a gymnastics floor routine. You know, we're a little bit like Simone Biles on the floor where I'll like make Joey lay on the ground like this. And then he's got to put his foot behind his head. It'll be stuff like that. You know, just, just. Do you guys ever video it? Yeah, sometimes. (laughs) Do you put it on Instagram or anything? We we have a couple times. Usually people are watching us in bewilderment and they're like, okay, I got to record this. But <laughs> it's so hard to visualize yeah. some of these moves that, you know, we found that laying on the ground and actually being head down and sit mm-hmm. while actually laying on the ground and moving, it works. Mm-hmm. It works good for my brain. Um, yeah. Uh, Andy and Jason you, might have it. you actually story. see it the right way. Yeah. 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 And so we'll prep that and we'll decide on that and then we'll go and we'll do the first jump and then we'll undoubtedly laugh about um, all of the mistakes that we made and we'll watch the video and we'll watch it in slow motion, maybe 10 times, 15 times and really analyze what went on. And, uh, and then we'll talk some shit to each other and then we will go up and fix the stuff that we did. Um, and once in a while we have to do the jump three or four times because it's really hard. So yeah. that's kind of how it goes. Yeah. And okay. then, uh, it's so, it's just fun. Training's fun, man. That's like, that's the best part. Training is even way better than competition. In yeah, my that, yeah. that sound, that sounds very fun. Yeah. I mean, like pro- the, all the problem solving and figuring out and that sounds very fun. Yeah. It's kind of like a puzzle. It is a little bit like a puzzle. So yeah, the trial yeah. and error and like, oh man, I thought that I thought for sure that was going to work and nope, doesn't work. Got to do it no. a different way, you know? Like, no, not at all. Like we were just trying something new today and, um, I ended up just falling on Joey's head. Like my ass just went right on his head. And next thing you know, I'm in a straddle like this, just folded in half and, and, uh, we get down and we're watching the video and there's, there's another team that we're mentoring this year. And we called them over to watch it because we're like, okay, guys, you guys got to see this. <laughs> That's great. Man. That is so great. Uh, it, ha- it happens to everybody. And yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. That's really good. I like yeah. that. It's super fun. It's just, just the training is great. I, I just can't recommend team training enough for anybody, whatever discipline it is. You, the ability to jump with the same person or people over and over and over again is so beneficial to getting better, um, and gaining skills and just having a connection and a purpose in skydiving. It's just, it's just changed my whole life. And J Russ is nodding cause he's a team junkie too. You know, I just Man, wish I had discovered it sooner. That's really that you just said that, that that's something that I don't get hardly ever. Like I'm, I'm almost always, either like, yeah, I just don't get to do that very often. I, I, the last time that me and a group of friends just said, Hey, we're just jumping together today and we're just going to all day, just us. That was a long, long, long time ago. Um, and, but when I was working full-time at iFly, um, Adam Vara, you guys know, Adam, he, he was at SunFest organizing. So Adam and I worked together and he and I would fly in the tunnel together all the time. Now he's, he's a much better flyer than me. He's much better, but that, I mean, exactly what you said, just getting to fly with him over and over and over almost every day in the tunnel, we were just always together flying. It it made a huge, huge difference. And uh, I hadn't really thought about that specific 
aspect of, of progression until you just said it. That's, that's really helpful. I'm glad you said that. Yeah. And it's just fun. Yeah. And it's awesome. It like what I think, I think back to remembering that you learn to read them so well, like you Mm -hmm. pick up on these tiny little things and you know exactly what they're going to do next, you know? And (laughs) it's so like, that's fun in itself. Just knowing, feeling connected to them in that way that you know what's coming. And then every once in a while, they'll intentionally trick, like do that thing, but then trick you to do something different. And that's fun too. Like, oh man, so great. I, I, <laughs> I, need, I need to do more of that, man. Yeah. I'm missing out. I'm missing out. You kind of are. And you know, it can be something casual too. Yeah. Um, sort of like when I, um, I mean, well, Joey and I started casual. We just started super casual and just would cho- turn up to the drop zone and be like, we're just going to do two ways today. Right. J Russ. And then it just evolved from there. But even, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I, I did a, a text message out to a couple of girlfriends and organized, like it was only four jumps, but it was just going to be us together. And, um, and at the end of those four jumps, we had improved. It's a miracle. It, yeah. It's just cool. Hmm. It's a good way to progress. That's good. That's really good. Awesome. All right. J Russ, anything else? Yeah. You got- I mean, it's an hour and 16 minutes. We've done really well. <laughs> uh, I was going to, you know, Lindsay brought up um, the, she was the one that recommended we talk about Dunning Kruger so many months ago. Um, so, and it sounded like uh, she experienced a little bit of that during Summerfest, but we did a whole podcast kind of around that one. So we don't necessarily have to go back to it, but. Um, yeah, I mean, I think those are, those are the questions that I wanted to ask. I, I didn't have anything else written down, so, um, I, I can be okay. All right. Lindsay, yeah. you, you got anything else? Burning? I mean, I had, a, I had a little list here of stuff, but I feel like we touched the majority of that for sure. So did we yeah. miss anything or yeah. are we good? No, no, I think, I think we're good. Yeah. I appreciated being able to come on and talk a little bit about MFS, a little bit about the yeah. team, all that stuff. Yeah. And Summerfest and meeting you, Chris, which was just such a highlight. You're super rad. Did you want to, yeah, did you want to, thank you. Do you want to tell the world about uh, Danny DeVito there? Mm. Did you guys see Danny? Well, this is I was Danny trying to figure DeVito. out what that is. Oh, okay. It's a pillow. You know, those sequins pillows that you can do this and then it, yeah. So, um, my first year with Joey, um, or no, his second year with Joey, he moved to the drop zone and that was my housewarming gift to him. (laughs) And, um, it's just, it's my favorite gift I've ever given. So I wanted to, I'm at Joey's house right now doing this and wanted to just show (laughs) that. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's about it. And uh, may I just share our events coming up? May I do Absolutely. a oh, of course. shameless plug yeah. about that? For sure. Yeah. Please do. I don't know if this will air before then, but we have our next Matrix workshop on Saturday, August 24th, 2024. And the next day mm. is Sunday, August 25th. We have a scrambles competition. And um, there are still spots available in both of those. And you can be head up, head down belly back or we also have a division where you don't have to be head down so we're trying to really promote mfs for beginners where you don't have to have that head down skill yet and that sort of translates as well into the test the intermediate test event at nationals and that was just at cloud games where there's just sit flying belly and back so we always incorporate that into our events to welcome newer free flyers, or even we have a lot of belly flyers that kind of do sit flying in the tunnel that like to experiment with the dark side a little bit that like to join us. So we're trying to make MFS, um, more accessible. So we have those two events. And then, um, just in general, I had built a website for our team this year and we have a lot of resources on there as well. So sdcmatrix.com. So there's my shameless plug. Um, about that but yeah Perfect. and we're just trying to create value that's about it yeah. okay so august 24th yeah is the what the workshop the workshop 
And then yep. it's so August 25th. It's just coaching all day, basically free coaching all day. Um, how to put together MFS jumps. And we, you can come by yourself and we'll partner you with people. And, and then, then the then next day is a competition. The scramble. Okay. Yeah. And then yeah. your website, say the website address one more time. SDCmatrix.com. Okay. So and then there's one, just, go ahead. No, there's just resources, events, info, pictures, and a, and a competition archive on there as well. Cool. And then one more time, can you just clear, tell us very clearly who your sponsors are and what you like about them, why you like oh. them as a sponsor? <laughs> Jeez, Chris. Come um, on, you're adding value. I <laughs> am. So, um, so uh, the Crave Show. No, I'm kidding. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Skydive Chicago obviously is um, is our home drop zone and they do the most for us. And we're so grateful to Rook and Heidi. So we do our events and we train at Skydive Chicago. Same with J-Russ and CORE. Um, Skydive Sebastian in the winter. So we put on events and we train there in the winter. That's down in Florida on the East Coast. It's beautiful. Um, and then uh, we have a relationship with LB Altimeters. Um, they have been very kind to us. Uh, J. Russ, you were talking about the owners and how they are. We haven't met the owners, but everybody that works for them has the exact same mentality and um, vibe. It just must be passed down from them. So they've been really, really good to us. And then um, Cookie. Um, so that uh, we're part of the Cookie crew. And actually just at Summerfest, just last week, they brought us on as um, fully sponsored athletes. Oh, nice. So that was a really cool thing. Cool. Yeah. Um, so thank you to them. Thank you to Cookie. And then um, we fly vertical suits, which also, so does Core. And we have a great relationship with them. And um, I love my vertical suit. Um, who else? Oh, uh, UPT. So we just got new rigs with UPT. And they, I, I can backfly now without my rig going everywhere. So I love... I love my new, we have like these really cool coordinating rigs, um, that, you know, it's all about how you look going to the plane. doesn't matter how you fly. Uh, and then, <laughs> and then, um, we have a relationship with gyro and we've, um, all three of us, me and Joey and Nick Nash have been flying gyro canopies for our whole career. I've, I've been flying crossfires since, uh, 15 years and same with Joey. Well, he flies Alea and um, Nick Nash is on a Sapphire three. And so we've been flying gyro forever. Mm -hmm. So um, they support us and um, our newest sponsor is um, gold state gear. Mm -hmm. And so they brought us on as athletes and we couldn't be more excited about that. So they're the home gear store at Skydive Chicago, Skydive Elsinore and Skydive Paris. And so they do our rigging and, um, they sponsor our, uh, our scrambles. So they have provided some of the most badass cool prizes to the winners of our scrambles. So we've been giving away jerseys and t-shirts and all kinds of, all kinds of stuff courtesy of, um, GSG. So they're really badass. And then, um, one last one, you weren't expecting a 10 minute, uh, pitch here. Um, option studios, they design mm. our jerseys and uh, Nick Nash has had a relationship with Option Studios for many years. And so they brought us on as a team and um, we have these really cool team jerseys that, um, yeah, you know, it's how you look when you take pictures, obviously not how you fly. <laughs> so yeah, that's it. And, uh, <laughs> and we're going to go for many years. Yeah. Me and Joey are, um, we're in a long-term relationship here, so whether he likes it or not. <laughs> awesome. Very cool. <laughs> well, yeah, thanks Lizzie. for that, Chris. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you for being with us on the show. Thanks for hanging out and laughing and talking and telling stories. And uh, J Russ, I mean, we've done it again. We wasted yes. a perfectly no. good hour. We wasted it. Thank you. Lindsay said it for me. That is fantastic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I can only di oh, I can only disagree. So uh, that's so awesome. Uh. Oh, that's great. All right, everybody, get out there and have some fun. Get in an airplane with your friends. 
jump out, have a good time, enjoy the sky, take a minute to look around and just realize that you're getting a skydive, man. I like, I just can't believe it that we get to, we get to skydive. It's so awesome. It is so fun. What a dream. All right, Lindsay, thank you. Jay Russ, this is fun. Um, all right. We'll see you guys next time. Crave, do more, be better. Bye you guys. See you everybody. Bye. Bye.